Hello and welcome to Northampton. It's Sunday, day two of the European Championship weekend. Our spotlight driver today is going to be number two, Paul Harrison, who has won this championship twice in his racing career. Before we go and talk to Paul, let's find out some of the preparation he's done ready for this weekend. Thanks, Lindsay. See ya. A few bits of running repairs being undertaken, as you can see it's had a bit of steel work. Looks like it's had an hard life. One careful driver, but not so careful competitors. That's what that's about. This has been checked over and it's about ready to go. Point of interest there is the LD back axle, not many people use them these days. That's, this car goes back to 2003 and it's um, known as bulletproof back in the day. The half shafts can be a bit flimsy, but very, very heavy axle and more preferred these days are the Transits and the Ford 9 inch. But we stuck with the old one because that what was under the car and it seems to go all right on it, just that the half shafts let you down, as I say, they did at Bradford in the British. So this is the side of the workshop where the stock cars are. And we go through here to the workshop where we look after the trucks. Quite a few on nights out tonight, so the yard's not full for a change. A little bit of room to move about tonight. And just come in there, ready to park up. That's where the work's being done over there. This is what's commonly referred to as many hands make light work. Top team. Another one over there. Another one over there. Happy day. So this is us around the stock car, currently gossiping. All that many hands make light work rubbish. We just stood around chatting in the minute. Well, one or two of them are working. It's like a council effort, this one. Brad's is on the ramp in the air now. Just a quick nut and bolt check. Just had its gears changed. <clears throat> Hopefully everything's all right. Have a grease round. Bit of a squirt with the WD-40 in certain areas. Nearly ready to go. This is what's known in the trade as a pump and a squirt. <laughs> I've been told that that was the good side. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I don't know. Hey. Eh? All for the love of stock cars. So we're just taking the tarmac car out of the trailer so we can put the shale car in. Those of you that were at Skegness will recall that we sustained a little light damage. Hmm. Never mind, it's christened now. So where we are, starting up time, let's get it loaded. Brad's is still being worked on. This is at the back of the bus, winch wire is on. Aerofoil up in the roof, you can see the tyre racks are all full, ready to go. Not be long now before we've done with Brad's. This will get winched in and then we'll load Brad's into the trailer. In we go. Thank you. 
So that's us for tonight. Those two are loaded up. Carriage is full of tarmac cars. Feeling sorry for himself, that one up there. So we'll be getting them ready for the Skeg Nest meeting coming up sometime early August. That's it for tonight. We normally do a Tuesday night. This week we've done Thursday because it was forecast far too hot and we made a good decision. Cheers, boys. So our spotlight driver, as we said, is number two, Paul Harrison. Afternoon, Paul. Afternoon, Jonathan. So Sunday, sun out, Northampton. Sun's out, yeah, it's great, isn't it? The start to the day. Yeah. Um, good night last night, so we're looking forward to it. Yeah, so looking at the results last night, you got a sixth, fifth and a fourth, I think. So it's got pretty consistent results over, over Saturday night's meeting. Yeah, the car was good. To begin with, the track was a little... Uh, difficult to drive it was chopping a bit like a cloud field to be fair but they did a lot of work on it during the meeting and by the end the track came to me as how i like it when it gets slick a little bit blue from the rubber laid on top of the clay and the, the car dialed in it was good yeah, yeah. So we're going to feature you today, we're going to follow you throughout the meeting, come and chat to you every race and the end goal is to win the European Championship, which is kind of what we're here for. Um, you've won it twice before in your career, yeah. so kind of looking for third time lucky today. Well, it, it would be good to be fair, you know, I've, uh, I've not really given it much thought, we, we, we don't race anymore with an uh, eye on the prize, we come and we have a bit of fun and if we get good results then that's a bonus. Yeah. But as you say, I've won it twice here, that was when it was obviously Tarmite, yeah. now it's Shale, but um, I like the track, I'm, I'm feeling good this morning. I'll get out, get the heat out of the way. I think I'm scored pretty well high up in the points currently for the grid. So if we can get a good heat, but it's finished, then who knows what's coming in the fire. Yeah. So Ryan here in final last night, and you and I have spoken before uh, when we were arranging this back, kind of Ryan's consistency is almost the man to beat, isn't he? It's just, it's just on it, isn't it? He's got, everything's right for him at the moment. His car's good, he's good, his pecker's up. You know, every time he gets in the car, I know it says about being invincible in his car. And, and I reckon he probably feels that he is because yeah. I mean, his results prove it, his, his driving style proves it. He's the man to beat at the minute on shale and he's, um, he's just good. And anybody that can get the better of him, he's got the work cut out. But you are saying you're racing for fun. But I mean, if you think about last year, third in the world final at Bradford. Well, it was, to be fair, I only came back to shale as a yeah. result of reintroducing in Bradford. Uh, previously after we lost Coventry I lost a bit of mojo with regards to shale racing. We brought Bradford back into the mix and we like Kings Lynn. We thought oh Bradford Kings Lynn. This car we dragged out of a container, stuck an engine in it and as you say we went to Bradford got third in the world yeah. final. And I was really only praying at it. I didn't go expecting anything yes. like that but it just sort of happened and then um, as we've come into this year I've had terrible luck all year. <laughs> Sometimes people create their own luck, but I feel that car failure has been a bit of an issue. And then just different things here and yeah. there, just not being able to get on it. But yesterday was probably the best meeting I've had so far this season. And so hopefully I carry a bit of momentum and we can start making yeah. a bit of progress. Yeah. So you mentioned about like, sort of car failure and bad luck. Um, we saw at the beginning of the programme the amount of time you need to spend in the workshop in the week. And is it, is it a case of I need to spend a bit more time in the workshop or are you kind of happy with what you do it doesn't, so it doesn't overshadow life itself? I feel that the failures that we've had have not been a case of bad car prep. Yeah. I think, you know, at the British, two races during the meeting, I had a half shaft break. And then I think I had a gearbox explode at a meeting when I was doing really well. And just different things that are unforeseeable. You can't plan for things like that. There's no amount of prep in the garage that can, a half shaft either looks good or yeah. it doesn't yeah. you know there's no in between it's not like it looks like it's going to go it's yeah. either good or it breaks yeah. and, and that's what we're up against but yeah, a lot of the drivers spend a lot of time in the garage because as we've spoke about ryan and, and probably lee and matt and, and tom the professionals this is yeah. what they do week in and week out we're holders contractors you know we're busy during the day gets to the evening and we don't want to spend all the night in the garage you know we've got other things to do you know it's uh, it's trying to find a happy mix yes. so that you can race the car you can have fun but equally you can get on and do other things you know I like getting away and I like socializing and stuff and sometimes there's not enough hours yeah. in a day the grass is growing in fact it's not at the minute I haven't put it for a month because it's <laughs> the sun that we've been having which is a bonus but then we're supposed to be done stock car night Tuesday this week. The temperatures were, it was, yeah. it was immense, wasn't it? So I said to the lads, let's knock it on the head Tuesday. Let's come down Thursday yeah. instead. We're trying to do one night a week in the garage. So we, we get in there after work between sort of half past five and half past six, the lads start turning up. And I think we were home for nine o'clock, yeah. both cars done. We'd had the week previous on one of the cars. We had Thursday night on the other. We get them loaded up and we're done. I like to do it on a Tuesday, yeah. so we can put it to bed, forget yeah. about that, so we don't have to give the cars another thought. We can concentrate on earning money for the rest yeah. of the week. 
and that's generally what we do yeah. and what we've always done. I know back in the day maybe one of us keener, we'd probably do two nights a week in the yeah. garage, but whether it's necessary, yeah. I don't know. But you sound like you find that happy medium and clearly the results last night were themselves. Yeah, well the, the car kept rolling last night. But don't get me wrong, you've got to have the rubber the green because the track last, last night, it, it was really busy, it was hectic. Yeah. Camp. The Grand National, I think, 38 cars yeah. I heard there were, and it was yellow flag after yellow flag and there's lots of incidents. And sometimes it's there, there but for the grace of God go yeah. I. You yeah. see somebody that's on the roof or somebody else that's stuck up the fence and you think that could easily have been yeah. me. But sometimes you just get a little bit luckier and you bounce yeah. off somebody and they get unlucky and it gets good for you. Yeah. Last night that seemed to be the case. Before I let you get self uh, into, um, question around, probably the biggest surprise of the year so far was when you turned up at Ipswich with the ex Michael Stewart car. That was a bit of a, I think people are like, what's that? What's yeah, yeah, I, I know. And, and the thing is, I do keep saying I'm just in it for the fun. Yeah. I just decided I wanted some faster fun. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get an engine at the moment because of the, <clears throat> the situation that's going off with yeah. shortages of everything. Part, parts from America are difficult to come by. And I did speak to, to Ron Crunder about getting an engine at the end of last year and he said, yeah, probably February, March, and then it got put back to May and then eventually it became August. Obviously the World Finals at Ipswich. Yeah, yeah. When you get to my age, you can't think to yourself, oh, well, I'll, I can wait till next year or the year after. You know, time's catching up with me. I've got to get on and if I'm going to do it, now's the moment. So, uh, yeah, we chucked some money at, at the Lee, uh, to Lee Ferris build, yeah. Michael Stewart car. I went to Ipswich with it. It was the first time I'd jumped in the car. And it was mint, it was yeah. proper on it. I was really pleased with it. <clears throat> the engine was really good and everything. Went to Skegness, which is a smaller track, and it was more difficult to try and dial in. Okay. It's a car that feels more suited to the big tracks. Yeah. I think I was trying to run before I could walk at Skegness, thinking I could jump straight in it and make it happen, and I couldn't, and I became a bit frustrated. But uh, we'll get it to the next Skegness and onto one or two yeah. things, and hopefully we'll get somewhere near to where we need to yeah. be. But Ipswich, yeah, well, obviously the World Finals yeah. there, so that's where it's at this year. So if we're good round Ipswich, that'll do. So, you know, you, you do keep saying it is for fun, but you, you have got an eye on that goal roof again then. Do you know what? I, I'll be honest with you, Jonathan, I haven't really. That, no? that was a bridge that I needed to cross. I walked over it, fortunately, back in yeah. 2011. Every driver that comes into this sport dreams and would love to yes. win it. And and that was that was the one thing that always felt missing from my life was, you know, I'd, I'd, won, I'd won the British, I'd won the European, numerous finals, but it was just, I wanted to win it so badly, yeah. sometimes too much, I think. And my dad was the same, he managed to win it in 82. And it was always the thing, that the, the, the golden chalice that I couldn't quite get my hands on. And then it, when it came in 2011, I just feel so privileged to have yes. got my name on that trophy yeah. that if I never would get near it again, I would, wouldn't be bothered. I yeah. think that's perhaps why I was so elated at third in the World Final yeah, yeah. last year when it was unexpected and to get on the podium with the top guys, it, it was immense. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong, it would be amazing, but it's something that I don't aspire to. Yes. If it came to me, it would be wonderful yeah. and I'd really enjoy the moment. Yeah. But we don't need to win it anymore. No. I needed to win it previously, yeah. now I don't need to. So, yeah, to be a multiple world, world winner, yeah. would, I mean, that just puts you in the echelons of the sport. Yeah. And it would be amazing, but I don't need it. No. It would be nice. <laughs> what a good place to leave it. Paul, um, thank you very much for kind of the intro piece. We'll, we'll come back and talk to you after heat two and kind of and sort of track your progress yeah. throughout the course of the meeting. Good. Thank you very much. as well as it did last night. Yeah. 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 Don't just do one race and like put it in the back I of the be bus. Smiling <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you come over later. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Pleasure. Cheers. I don't know how good the microphone is on that, but I could tell you a joke while I'm waiting. So this Irish fella decides to take his lad to the zoo for the day. So they get to the zoo and they get to the elephant enclosure, and there's a sign in the elephant enclosure that says, throw the elephant a bun and it'll guess your age. So the Irish fella says to his boy, go on son, throw the elephant a bun and see if he can see how old you are. So the boy gets a bun and he throws it at the elephant, the elephant grabs it with his trunk, chucks it in his mouth and stamps his feet six times. He says, Jesus be Christ, he's right as well. You're six years old. He says, you, you give it a try, Dad. He says, I will. So he throws it a bun and the elephant lets out the biggest part you've ever heard and then stamps his feet twice. The boy looks at his, his dad and says, did he get it right, Father? He says, yes, indeed he did, son. Jesus be Christ, he got me right. I'm 42. Ha, ha, ha.
There's another one for you. Father and son cannibals. Starving they are, they've not eaten for weeks. And the dad says to the boy, we need to go out and get somebody so me you and your mum can eat. So the boy says, what are we going to do dad? He says, follow me into town, I'll show you. So they hide him behind this bush shelter. He says, right, when I give you the nod, I'm going to grab somebody, take them home, and me and your mum are going to eat them. Next minute, this skinny little bird walks past, and the boy says to his dad, should we grab her, dad? And the dad says, no, son, let her go. There's not enough meat on her to feed me, you and your mother. Another five minutes goes past, and this big old fat bird walks past. And the boy says, should we grab her, dad? He says, oh, no, no, far too much fat and gristle on her. She'll fur his arteries, let her go. Another 10 minutes, this bird walks past, five foot nine, long blonde hair, big boots, nice backside. And the dad says, son, grab her. And the boy says, oh, we're not going to eat her, are we, dad? He said, no, son, we'll take her home and eat your mother. <laughs> Don't put it all on cutting room floor. Oh, no, no. Oh, enough of the cutting room floor in gears and tears. I want to make it to the main event this time. You just come off track after heat two. So we said like at the beginning, warts and all. So it's yeah. great if you win or get a good place, but a DNF in heat two. You can see by the look. I know, of the yeah. Fight, <laughs> you yeah. You, I'm covered in warts. That's where we're at. Yeah. I got a good start. You know, first bend there was a, a bit of a sideways shunt, and whilst it didn't affect the car too much, it's knocked the shocker off and yeah. bent the axle. But I was living through that, and then. Uh, getting my head down and it felt good. I got Tom knocking on the back door, but he wasn't particularly making any ground on me. And then uh, only a, probably three or four laps in, I just 
the age old problem that I've had is the, the half shafts and, and the back inside one went, which is really frustrating because we had the, um, the, the half shafts and the hubs off during the week because we had troubles like this at Bradford, yes. two half shafts during the meeting. So we had the bits off it to check, make sure the axle was straight and everything, and it is, it's all running through. So it's just very frustrating to just go and do another half shaft. Yeah. Didn't take a knock or anything on that wheel. It just, um, as I went to the throttle, cut my head into turn two, just spun itself out and um, yeah, game up. The yellows came out at that point in the race, but I knew I was over at that point. So as soon as Sophie allowed us to move again, onto the infield, yeah. unfortunately, and watch the others. Yeah, because like you say, you were showing some decent pace, like holding Tom behind, Tom wasn't getting past you. No. Uh, which is it's real frustrating when stuff like that happens, because what does cause it? Is there any... Well, do you know what? It is, it... It is an age-old problem with these. Whilst we talk about the back axle being bulletproof, yeah. that is the Achilles heel of the LD, right. okay. is the half shaft. And uh, yeah, the, the, the outside one is full length, but the, we shorten the inside one so often, the, well, they're, they're always welded yeah. when you've shortened them, and that yeah. looks like this is where this has been the, the yeah. weak point on it. But I mean, they are either good or they're not good. There's yeah. no in between. There's no yeah, yeah. checking it, and uh, yeah, it's got a, it's got a bit of a, a crack or anything. Nah, they either work or they don't work. Yeah. Very rare that they show a cracker. If they're showing a crack, they've generally gone by that point. But um, yeah, it's very it's disappointed. Repair. Yeah, because yeah, I was it, trying to get yeah. higher up the grid for the start of the um, European because yes. the car feels good. And uh, as that race went, uh, as Tom was knocking on the door, that's generally my. Um, not, not the greatest part for me. I, I like it when the track slicks up. Yeah. And at that point, it was still a bit greasy. So if I could have held Tom off then, I'm sure towards the later parts of the race, I would have made good ground. Yeah. You know, nobody seemed to be showing really well then. You know, um, Josh was going well. Yeah. Willie Scoyles was holding on real well to start with. I think he only dropped back to third or fourth, so he did real good. Ryan, he was coming, but yeah. Tom and Frank looked like they were struggling. Yeah, they did. You know, they didn't yeah. look like they were making great ground when it was slick. I said, watching the race, it does look a bit slower almost. Like you, there isn't. Any any grip out on that track. No, when it, when it blacks off like that, you yeah. can see it got very yeah. dusty. How they're going to control that in today's heat, I, I don't know, it's difficult. They, they watered it only three or four laps in, but yeah. almost straight away, they, it's obviously it's been evaporated. So that, that racing line, is that just rubber and stuff that's going, or are you down to the base? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's down to the base. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's real hard clay yeah. down there. And um, it doesn't work too badly for me, yeah. that. It suits my style of driving, rather than, you know, Tom and the, there's the sprint car with the back end yeah. out. It's not really suiting him. No. Normally, he finds his own line on here yeah. and, and flies around Northampton, but it's as though somebody's moved his rails yeah. and he can't find his <laughs> yeah. grip. Yeah. yeah. Because there isn't any. Because I saw him in that race talking about Tommy. He, he went further out. Ryan was tucking in, but it slowed him down in more than anything. And Ryan he's looking for it because yeah. that's normally where he finds his yeah. grip, but it's just not happening. Yeah. He's finding the same bit of rubbish track that we all find yeah. when we try and race on his bit, <laughs> but it's not there for him to know. Somebody's moved. <laughs> it's like over there. So <laughs> yeah, but, but Ryan's real good when the track slicks up yeah. like that. And you could see then he was within himself, yeah. just maintaining his position so that he's obviously going to start this championship in pole yeah. and it's there for him to lose now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of repairs, is it, is it a relatively quick repair or is yeah, it? Yeah, well, as you can see here, Jonathan, we've got the shocker off. It, it just knocked the bottom off the yeah. shocker, so that's a quick, easy fix. Bit of a bend in the axle, so we'll get the port of power on that and straighten it. The half shaft's already out, which yeah. might be hot that. But no, you can see there, look, yep. the half shaft, that's where it's um, it, it's welded in and it's, yes. um, it's just spun itself ah, out, okay. it's broke on the weld. Yeah. That's what's happened there. It's just a weak point with these, but um, stick another half yeah, shaft absolutely. in and hope that that one's better than that one. Nice necklace with somebody that, no? <laughs> <laughs> medallion style, yeah. Exactly. 80s, I think, that Mr. T could have worn that, couldn't he? Yeah. See, we started this conversation, you're a bit morose, but now you're happy, you consolation right, all right, listen, like I said to you before, we came here with no big ideas, yeah. we had a good night last night, it's not significant damage, it's all yeah. fixable. Uh, last night's results will still leave me reasonable, yeah. I would imagine four plus four or five or something like that. So do you go in the consolation as well? Are you no, enough no. points to go to enough the final? points, yeah. The, the way that it works is all last night's points counted, yeah. today's heat, yeah. the top 28 from those races are right. gridded, yeah. uh, and I think the consolation is the last chance saloon for, yes. for the top four drivers. Okay. So we're already in it. Yeah. It's just, it, it's going to leave me further back than yeah. I would have liked to be. Yeah. Uh, truth be told, I'd like to be up front knocking on Ryan's door, yeah. but uh, I'll leave that for somebody else yeah. to do and I'll be there to pick up the yeah. pieces. <laughs> hey! <laughs> well, coming back and talk to you after yeah, the sure. European, yeah. uh, fingers crossed for uh, a good result in that. No problem, thank Cheers, you very Paul. much. Thank you. Cheers.
married couple just moving their house together, not being married too long, and uh, they get back from their honeymoon, and they, um, the missus says to the fella, um, we've got slates on the roof I'm fixing, can you fix it? Says, um, do I look like a builder? I'm going to the pub. I think it's the pub. Next day she says, um, that's dripping, can you fix it? Says, do I look like a plumber? I'm going to the pub. She gets to the next day, she says, um, the car won't start on the drive, I want to do the shopping. Can you fix it? He says, do I look like a mechanic? I'm going to the pub. Anyway, he staggers back from the pub and the car's moved on the drive. He looks on the roof and the slate's been fixed. Gets in the toilet to wash his hands and the tap's not dripping. He says, to now then, what's the crack? How come all the jobs have been done? She says, just after you went to the pub, I said, we had a really good looking fella knocked on the door see if I wanted any odd jobs doing. So, so he's fixed everything, he's done the lot. Yeah. The fella says, I bet that's cost me an absolute fortune. She says, oh no, not the case. What he said was, I ever had to bake him a cake or give him really kinky, kinky sex. She says, oh, what flavour cake did you bake him? She says, do I look like Mary Berry? <laughs> so a duck wanders into a bar, jumps on the bar stool, and onto the bar, says to the barman, says, I've, um, have you got any bread? The barman says, no mate, we're a pub, we sell, we sell beer and wines and spirits, we don't sell bread. All right, all right, so it clears off. Next day, one is in on the bar, still on the bar, says, uh, no mate, you got any bread? I said, didn't we have this conversation yesterday? I told you, we're a pub, we sell beer, not bread, do one. So the dog does it all week, gets to the end of the week, the dog wanders in, onto the bar stool, on the bar, he says, you got any bread? The barman says, look, we've had this far too many times this week, and I'm sick to death for you. He says, if you ask me for bread one more time, I'm going to nail your beak to the bar. He looks at the man, he says, have you got any nails? He says, no, I haven't. He says, you got any bread? <laughs> because it looked pretty dry. As it was starting on the exit to turn four, it was pretty dry, they got water in. But on the outside of the track, so the big track drops, it's going to be really difficult to get the traction to get the drop on the car on the inside of me. Right up against the middle, the last little bit looks dry. So if I try to get right out there, let me get a slingshot off the corner. One of those things, who knows. That first bend will be a tough call, we've got Lee Ferris three inside with Craig Finnegan just behind him on four inside so they're obviously going to be in a rush so they're not going to give us a minute so they'll be trying, I would imagine, to make something happen first bend It's a bit of a roll of the dice to be fair, it's, I think it's, uh, it's anybody's guess you either get lucky and get round the course or you just pear shaped Just seen the trophy go past I've got a lovely space in one of my rooms that that could sit. So let's try and make it happen. Just about knocked every corner off the car. 
Jesus Christ on a bike. I had a bad start, rattled the fence. Ryan kept us really wide and I thought it'd be dry out there and I'd get some grip. I rattled the fence but then I got going. But then Lee rattled it here, come across me, I hit his nerf rail and I would have got away with it but the pack just absolutely loaded me in. Hey? Up in air, spinning round, nearly went on my roof. Right fucking mess, I think this is wrecked. It's not. It looks like it's hit the actual underwear parcel shelf is. It probably wants welding up a little bit. You know, the propeller. But this this is locked up for some reason. As they've just tracks has just told me off this is locked up completely. On this side here, this wheel. There's something underneath panel bars open. So uh, European Championship race, I think this weekend typifies the highs and lows of stock cars. We didn't make the first bend. It's all disaster, yeah, yeah. yeah. The only good thing that came from it is they haven't used a lot of petrol at current <laughs> petrol prices. <laughs> it's just an absolute mess. The car's wrecked. Yeah, it's, yeah. Old cage has gone at the back. Uh, all the brackets underneath the back axles all moved. Front, you can see the front ends are scrappy mess, all underneath damaged. It's a uh, bracketry on the back axle, it's just a, yeah. just a mess, yeah. So the green flag dropped, Ryan had kept us really wide, Paul didn't go quite as quick as I wanted him to. I sort of looked for a dry bit on the outside, yeah. it didn't work for me, it took me loose, I rattled the fence on the exit of turn four. As we went past the green, Lee was all over the track, he yes. climbed the, the fence big time, it spat him across my front and I actually hit him with my offside front into his nerf rail, which straightened me up yes. and I thought I've got away with this, but then the pack just picked me up, levelled yeah. me into the fence, I hit the fence big time, threw me up in the air and I was, well, I thought I was going over, yeah, up, yeah. I was upside, well I didn't go upside down but I nearly did, and I, I was spun round whilst I was in the air, and it's the damage that as the car's been rotated in the air that somebody's obviously st stoved in the back there so he's been underneath it with the bumpers and things and just made one almighty mess of it. Yeah. The yeah. last thing you need for semi prep. Yeah, I would say semi final next Saturday, isn't it? And yeah. uh, there's a lot of work to do to the car to get yeah. it. Yeah. It's almost, yeah, I might go and have a word with one of the chaps that's professionals and see if yeah. he's got a bit of time in the to sort it out because, yeah. you know, they, we're trying to work during the week and we're playing at it. This is not an evening's work no. that we normally no. play for. No. You know, there's a, there's a fair few hours to be put into it to get anything like. So, yeah, yeah it's not great. Really. No. But, um, no, and it's a shame, isn't it? Because, like, you know, like, great, great day yesterday. Day, high hopes for the for the race. You started row two, three. You're quite up there. Yeah, row two outside, which yeah, all good. But um, and the track, to be fair, it came. I, I would have loved to have been out there. You know, yeah. I was. I would. I would have think that t towards the back half of the race, I'd have been real quick. You know, Ryan looked like he got away. It yeah. must have been so frustrated. It kept going and going, and so I thought he won the race three or four times. But when they keep stopping, rightly yeah. so, if lads are in vulnerable positions and things, the yellows need to come out. But. He obviously thought he was going to have the pace, but where yeah. Charlie got his pace from, it was... Did you, it see, was the last, did you see the last bend? Yeah, I could see him coming, to yeah. be fair. I was, it was like goggle box. Bradley was at the side <laughs> of me, and I was chatting him. That we, you know, we were talking the race yeah. through, and I'm like, look, he's catching him, he's yeah. catching him. And then, he, obviously, he went for one almighty last bender. I, don't, I didn't quite see what happened after they made yeah. contact, but then I seen them both. Obviously, Ryan will have backed him up to the fence, and Carl came through. And it, funnily enough, Carl earlier on in the race, I'd seen him this bend in turns. Yes. He did a full yeah, rotation. Yeah, yeah. He was spun yeah. out by I think Liam. Yeah. So uh, yeah. fair play to Carl. You know, he's um, he, he's a good campaigner. Yeah. He's there week in yeah, and week yeah. out. So I'm, I'm pleased that yeah. Carl won it. 
commiserations to Ryan because you know he's the man and he's got it wrapped up yeah. to all intents and purposes. But Charlie had other yes, ideas, didn't he? Which which makes stock car racing fantastic. Because we stood well, there like going, Ryan's won this, and actually. I mean, it was painful for the fans, you know, the stops and starts. At one point, I said to Brad, I said, the water cart's done more tracks, <laughs> more laps than what the cars have, because yeah. it, it was the fight. Yeah. But there's, um, uh, it, yeah, there's a lot of drama, wasn't there? You know, Tom wheel fell off, I didn't see how that happened. And, but by the second restart or something, you'd got, to, well, you'd done, I think, the front runners, there was myself, Matt Newton, um, Lee Ferris was out, yeah. wasn't he? Nels Tesla was out, and Paul Hines was the other side yeah. of me out. So the restart with top five or six drivers yeah. off from the grid, it's uh, made for an ugly sort of grid yeah. for the European, yeah, didn't it? When they actually did the restart, but as we say, that is stock car racing. The fans like Lindsay to see said that as well. Yeah. Before, when we were talking about when we were used to that stock car racing, like, yeah, is that, was that well used phrase, isn't it? The fans like to see the cars on track battling each yes. other, but it was drama right up until the last yeah. bit in that one, wasn't it? You know, yeah. Charlie reinvigorated the end of the race yeah. to, to Ryan's frustration, I can imagine. Yeah. Listen, you've got lots of words. Yeah, to thanks for that. No, <laughs> just that, Jonathan. Not that no, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what needs doing? Appreciate yeah. it. No, and um, thanks so much for your time today. And, and it, it creates a great story. No and problem. It's not yeah. always great in stock cars, and no, sometimes there is. A bit. I reckon the off-track antics will probably give the viewers more fun because I told a couple of stories again as I was waiting to go I out there, you. and then when I was on the on the grid, I was telling them about where I thought the line was going to be good on the exit to the okay. turn when the flag went down. So. Brilliant. If you have a look, a little bit play back the camera in there, I was chatting away, everyone and think I'm mad. <laughs> I was walking around and could see me talking, think I'm chatting to you. You were out there for a long time though, to yeah, be fair. Right, so, uh, yeah, a couple of stories and that. And, Brilliant. Uh, hey I hope it makes for a, a reasonable watch for your viewers. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Paul, yeah. thanks so much for your time no today. No problem. All right, thank, thank you. you.